Hey, good morning, guys. Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. And on today's podcast, we're going to talk about weight management. Stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, day, I'm actually a day late getting this episode out here, so I uh, appreciate you hanging in there with me. But um, here's what we got. I was in the Smoker Builder U uh, platform the other night, and uh, if you're not familiar with that, I'll just tell you what that is real quick here. Smoker Builder U is our private online community. It's kind of like a big Facebook group, only way cooler because it's not on Facebook. So um, if you're interested in talking about this kind of su stu uh, subject matter, join us over there for free, smokerbuilderu.com. But anyway, in the site, my buddy Danny, um, you know, he basically pointed out that I was late doing the podcast. Appreciate that, Danny. And uh, in there, he asked me to talk about weight management and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's actually a great topic because over the years, I've built a lot, a lot of pits and uh, I got... I got to tell you, I've ran into some issues with this. Um, and when we're talking about weight management, we're going to hit that in a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, we're going to do it from just a general perspective of just placement of a smoker on a trailer, for instance. Um, that's, that's really, really, really important for you guys building your own smokers and building your own trailers. I see a lot of them that are done um, incorrectly, let's say. And... Uh, Bad things can happen on the highway if, if you're if you're not careful with that. Um, but then also, uh, we'll probably talk about it from the perspective of somebody that's new to building smokers in their shop and how to move stuff around and things like that. Um, so we'll kind of get into this. I'm just kind of winging it. I am sitting at a table with a piece of paper here, and I tried to make some notes, but I'm going to just kind of wing it because that's how I do it best. Um, by the way, if you have any... Uh, feedback or whatever about the podcast for me, I'd sure like to hear from you. You can either shoot us an email or the best way to do it is to give us a review on this podcast. Um, on the bottom of this episode, while you're le listening, um, or even on the episode uh, page here on whatever platform you're listening to, you should be able to scroll down and hit the little button at the bottom that says review or stars or something. You know, Let us know how you feel about the information we're delivering to you here. Um, anyway, get right into it here. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is like weight management from a perspective of where your smoker should be placed on the trailer and, you know, other things that you want on there, you know? So when we first start off building a smoker is one thing, you know, like getting the, getting the pit design correct and, and, uh, you know, making sure our firebox is the right size, the smokestack is right. It's in the, it's placed in the correct spot, you know, the cooker's going to cook really great, but the design of the trailer is a whole nother animal. And while you'll see a lot of the pro builders, you know, what they're doing, um, a lot of times looks can be deceiving. It depends on, it depends on like the construction of your pit, for instance. You might see one guy that's got his axles pretty far forward on the trailer, but he's got a lot of other stuff up on the tongue of the trailer. Like let's say he's got a gravity feed up on the tongue of the trailer or something, you know, along with your stick burner, not saying anybody does that, but you know, it could be a situation like that. Or um, maybe your firebox is double wall insulated three eighths plate, let's say, which is, I think ridiculous, but some people do that. And uh, maybe you got a warming cabinet up on top of there. Um, those two scenarios are vastly different from each other as far as where the weight on that trailer needs to be centered, right? So when we talk about that, we're going to talk about the center of gravity, okay? Now, imagine if you had one spot to tie a rope to this thing and lift it up. That would mean that you've only got, you've got this rope and it's, and, or a sling or whatever you want to do. Think about a crane, for instance, and you're going to pick this cooker up or the whole trailer up. Where do you have to be in, with that placement? You know, let's say you're looking at the passenger side of the trailer or the driver's side of the trailer. Where do you have to be left to right to be able to pick up that load without it, with it being perfectly balanced and not listing one way or the other, you know, tilting one way or the other, that would be the specific, or that would be the center of gravity for that cooker. 
or load that you're picking up. Now, that's really, really important to know because if that center of gravity is off to one end of that load, whatever it is, your trailer, your, your cooker, whatever it is, then you're going to have to go past that with your, with your axle set up. So I'll try to explain that in a little bit more uh, detail there. And, you know, there's, there, you'll, see different, you'll see different opinions about this statement I'm about to make across the Internet, depending on who you listen to. I'm just going to tell you the way that I feel about it as far as how it's the, the best design, okay, and the safest. So there's this thing called the 40-60 rule or 60-40 rule. You can talk about it whichever way you want. What happens is, is you don't want a majority of the load behind the axle. So behind the axle would be the opposite end of the trailer from the tongue. So if you've got a tongue of a trailer, you want 60% of your load on the tongue end of that side of the axle and then 40% behind it. Um, look at these enclosed car hauler trailers. And they're designed to actually... Um, they, they are, they're designed to actually haul a car, right? And so the engine is typically up front when you drive a car up into a trailer. Not always, but typically it is. And so they place that axle strategically to where 60% of the weight of the car will be on the tongue of the trailer and 40% will be behind. Now, if you back that car into the, into the trailer, depending on what kind of car you got or things like that, what kind of trailer you got, you might be in a situation to where too much uh, weight is behind the axle, right? That's why those axles are placed so far forward. It's not 60% of the length of the trailer. It's 60% of the weight that we're dealing with, okay? So on a smoker trailer, you have to first of all know what, where is most of your weight going to be. Is, is the majority of your weight on this cooker behind like in the firebox, or is it up in the front end of the cooker for some reason? I don't know. Like Bingo, for instance, has that giant warmer on the front of of the uh, on the front of the cook chamber. So I chose to do tandem axles. I'll tell you another reason I chose to do that instead of one single six thousand pound axle. Um, I had to get I had to capture a lot of that weight up front, and the trailer really wasn't that long, right? <clears throat> so now if you go ahead and I'll, I'll get down into that detail just a little bit more here, just a second. But if you go into like putting multiple pieces of equipment on a trailer, now we've got more stuff to consider. Um, you can't just know where the pick point is or what we call the pick point, but the center point, uh, center of gravity of your smoker is, um, and set your axles based on that because we've got a whole nother load on the front of this trailer. Um, I've seen guys put sinks with uh, water tanks up front, and we all know water's really heavy. Um, wood boxes, uh, you know, other smokers, you know, who, who knows, uh, living quarters. You know, there's all kinds of stuff like that that go on to trailers. And, uh, you know, you have to really understand what the weight of all of that is. So when you realize what that is, now we're going to take that weight and uh, there's a several different ways you can do it. Um, you know, it just sometimes it's a guess. I'll be honest with you to figure all of this out. Um, and here's how here's how I recommend doing it. This is the front to back placement. Okay. The next part we'll talk about is side to side. But the front to back placement, if you're really unsure about how to how to balance your trailer. Um, what you can do, we're assuming at this point that you've already built a trailer, you have all your gear ready to place on the trailer, and you're ready to actually, let's say, hang your axles after you built a trailer, possibly. Um, what you can do is actually get a, uh, you can get do a couple different things. You can actually just get some concrete blocks or something and set this whole thing up on that, or uh, you can temporarily mount your axles to uh, your spring hangers and everything to a piece of angle iron. Let's say I've done this before, some two by two by quarter inch angle to where uh, you can actually slide those axles front to back of the trailer and get the weight right. So what you should not be able to do 
Okay, now this this is sketchy stuff, guys. So so don't just take what I'm saying and run with it. <laughs> Ask me questions, and that's what Smoker Builder U is for, right? Because we're we're dealing with some some structural stuff that that's why I typically don't talk about this kind of stuff. Um, because you could do something and get hurt. So just be really, really careful moving things around like this. You're going to have to have some things like a pallet jack, a, a gantry or two, you know, things like that, so that you can actually safely move this stuff around. If you're sitting there with a rock bar and a 4x4 and a four four block, good luck, man, but I don't recommend it, honestly, okay? But if you really want to get that weight right, um, you need to find a way to move your pivot point or the axle or the, the test axle front to back until you can determine that you've got more tongue weight than you do uh, weight at the back of the trailer. Um, now, what they say as far as tongue weight, they say uh, 15% tongue weight is what I've always heard. And I'll be honest, I've never done that. I've never weighed that. Well, that's not true. I have weighed it. I used a pallet scale one time. Um, just to see how much tongue weight I had because I felt it was too much. Um, truth be told, that trailer pulled like a dream, and I don't think I had 15%. I think I was less than that. So once you kind of figure out that pivot point on your trailer, where that center is, you're going to want to be behind that pivot point with your axles or axle. Okay. Um, now, weight capacity of your axles set up with the trailer um, the overall trailer weight. So I've always doubled whatever that weight is. So if you think that whole entire trailer weighs like 4,000 pounds total with everything put on it, how you're going to pull it normally, you're going to want to be somewhere around a 10,000 pound trailer, eight to 10,000 pound trailer. Um, that's pretty typical for what I build. If I've got a big build out with a lot of stuff, I've, heck we've done up to 12,000 pound trailers. Um, a lot of the time, it's not because the weight of the equipment sitting on the trailer weighs that much. It's typically because of bridge aprons, terrible highways, long-distance travel, unforese unforeseen circumstances where you cram the cook chamber full of wood, <laughs> you know, at every other square inch of the pit that you got to haul extra stuff, you know, um, anything like that. So... That's what that's uh, that's front to back placement. I, I kind of glanced over that a little bit. The assen essentially what it amounts to is try to get it to where you don't have too much tail weight. That's what you're trying to avoid, or too much tongue weight. The reason for that is if you have too much weight on the tail of the trailer, the trailer will swing behind you like it'll swerve. If you get to a certain weight or you're going downhill, that trailer, will, especially if you're going downhill and you hit your brakes all of a sudden, that trailer will try to pass you. I've had that happen before. Scariest thing in the world, man. You see a lot of people flipped over in the ditch because of situations like that. Um, so so you'd never want more weight on the back of the trailer. Every, every time somebody wants to mount a cooker on the back end of the trailer, left to right, like it's the long dimension of the trailer is the same parallel direction as the axle. I just cringe because what I just heard is all the weight is behind the axle is what I heard. And that thing will start swerving. And I don't know if you ever felt that before, but if it gets bad enough, it's real scary. So that's, I do not recommend that. I always go lengthwise with the trailer. So um, if you have too much weight in the front, you could have too much hitch weight because your hitch is only rated for so many pounds. It's a class whatever hitch. I can't remember all the numbers and stuff. Um, 1,500 pounds, let's say. You don't want to have, if you got a 6,000 or a 12,000 pound trailer and your hitch is only rated for 1,500 pounds, you got to be a little more strategic with the weight placement on your trailer. That's why you typically wind up going with tandem axles on a longer, heavier trailer. Um, what happens is, is those axles actually split the load over a longer span. Um, for instance, I had a trailer one time that I, Tom and I built for a lady. It had uh, tandem 500-gallon tanks on it. And uh, they were reverse flows, and they had double-wall insulated quarter-inch fireboxes. And the, the back end of that trailer was so heavy, we slammed those axles back as far as we possibly could. 
And uh, when you let the tongue jack down, <laughs> the jack would go down, but the trailer would stay put. <laughs> so what happened was is, is like the axles absorbed all of that tongue weight just because the axles were so heavy, right? And uh, they were spread pretty good, you know. So we wound up with not enough tongue weight. Alternatively, we didn't have any uh, too much weight on the back either. We were just perfectly balanced. And those axles, when you put tandems in, have this thing called an equalizer. And uh, that's what splits the axles. And that equalizer was literally just positioning the trailer perfectly right in between the weight of those two axles. So we actually wound up adding weight to the tongue of the trailer. You know, I don't know if somebody just probably grabbed their chest and, oh, my gosh. But uh, we actually put a counterweight in the tongue of the trailer to get some tongue weight down on that uh, trailer. Um, we've had to do some crafty things like that in the past, but that thing, I'm telling you, man, you could, you it just, it pulls so good when you get that weight right. Okay. So now I told you that the last part of this podcast, we are going to talk about placement passenger side to the driver's side or left to right on the trailer instead of front to back. So, um, and this is looking at the end of the trailer. So another thing you really got to be careful about is when you're designing your trailers for for smokers to sit on them, you don't want to have all of the weight on one spring, okay? Now, it's unavoidable sometimes because axles, you can't buy them. Well, you can special order and some places have them skinnier than 58-inch spring centers. But for the most part, you're going to wind up with either a 58 or a 76 or something like that spring center, 74 and a half, some weird number like that. That's the center from spring to spring. So we're going to wind up with a whole lot of trailer deck there and a smoker that's only four foot wide or three foot wide, right? And if you put it in the dead center of the trailer, you're going to have to reach really far in to get a hold of it. Or if you're going to stand on the cook on the trailer and cook like a thousand gallon up on a trailer with a canopy, that cooker is going to have to be off to one side. So how do you deal with a situation like that? Um, so you've, Typically, I'll put in tandem axles, right? But then I'll just add more weight to that trailer than I than I actually need. Um, so, for instance, if my cooker weighs 2,000 or 3,000 pounds, you know, we might go ahead if it's a if it's all going to sit off to one side, and a majority of the time the rest of the trailer is going to be empty, then I'm at least going to double it. I might even go just a little bit heavier, just because it's not what it looks like when you start. Over time, those springs and stuff like that, how many bridge aprons you hit, rough terrain, things like that, over time, those uh, those springs get a lot of wear on them. And, uh, you know, I've even flattened springs. I've had springs go flat on me to where they lose their arch um, for one reason or another, um, just because that cooker's sitting on that one side. So truth, to- truth be told, on that situation, I wound up putting heavier axles on the trailer. Um, I've even heard of guys putting bigger springs on one side than the other. I've never done that. I like things to be balanced. Um, but another way that you can fix that is, uh, add, add weight to the other side of the trailer, put a different kind of cooker over there. Um, that's heavier maybe, or you could even just put like a wood box over there and store a lot of wood. That's what you'll see most guys do. Um, the catch is, is it hauling it empty for long? Like if you're going to go across country with that wood box empty, it's just going to be all that weight on that one side. You'll wind up wearing tires. You'll, uh, probably have bearing issues on that side. Um, at some point, you know, think about the, the hardware that's holding everything on, you know, those kind of things. So, oh, always, in my opinion, overbuild a trailer. Don't don't go skimpy. Don't try to save money. This is not the place to save money. Um, build it heavier than you need. Uh, really take your time getting positioning figured out. You know, if the center of gravity is about a foot forward from the firebox on an offset smoker or so, then you're going to want to be slammed as far back as you possibly can with those axles. As a matter of fact, um, these are expensive and I've never personally used them, but the greatest thing in the world ever came out is these ac- tubeless axles. Man, these things are cool. So it's literally like a bracket 
that bolts to your trailer frame that has all the suspension built in. Usually they're like a torsion style axle, which is uh, not springs, but um, you can get these axles now that are split like that. Now you really, really, really got to make sure these things are in alignment on that trailer. If they're crooked, you'll have all kinds of turning issues and bad stuff happening. But if you get it hops and weird stuff, but if you get the uh, if you get those axles tuned where they're perfectly straight with each other, you can actually straddle a firebox now. That's cool. So uh, one place I found those is eTrailer.com uh, is one of the websites I found those on. They're not cheap. I'll just tell you right now, especially if you want to go tandems, they're they're really expensive. But um, that's another solution. And you can slide those back and forth. Like I said, it's it's a bit of a pain in the rear to like lift that trailer up and slide them back and forth and stuff. But, um, you know, it's worth every minute that you spent trying to get that weight right. So on the next episode, I think we're going to talk about how to move cookers around and stuff like that, because that's also tied into this, like gantries and things like that. So anyway, guys, uh, if you don't mind, I appreciate you listening to this podcast. Be safe out there when you're designing stuff on your own. Um, sometimes there's a there's a point where it's okay to save money, and sometimes there's a point where you don't want to save money <laughs> because that stuff can get people hurt. So uh, make great decisions. Ask me if you have if you need help with a specific situation. It's really hard to get very specific on a podcast like this. That's why we have a thing called Smoker Builder U. I'm not the only guy in there that's an expert. There's other guys too, but I'll try to answer everybody's questions every single time. Heck, we might even do a podcast about it. So anyway, appreciate you listening to this, guys. Um, If you don't mind, give this podcast a review. I'd sure appreciate it, whatever platform you're on, Spotify, iTunes, and all the others. And uh, let me know if it's helping you out at all. Um, I'll keep doing them. Go on over to smokerbuilderu.com and sign up and join our community. Appreciate you. Till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. This is Frank Cox, the barbecue pit engineer, signing off. Take it easy.